Hi guys, it's the Power BI guy and today I'm going to cover Power BI datasets. Now this is a very important topic from an organizational architecture perspective when deploying Power BI and if you're not aware of what they are, I'm going to cover uh, what Power BI datasets are um, and then actually show you how to create them and use them uh, with a live demo. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about datasets, what they do and, and what the benefits are. So what is a Power BI data set? Essentially, a Power BI data set splits the visualizations from the DAX and the calculations and the actual model itself that contains the data. So you're splitting the file into two portions where you have your tables in one file and your calculations and then the visualizations in another. So naturally, when you publish a PBIX file, if, if, you are, if you're just doing the DAX and the visualizations in one report, when you publish that to the Power BI service, naturally it splits into two uh, portions. Um, you have the blue icon, which is the visualizations, and then below that you have the actual data set, which contains the data and the DAX calculations that you've performed or the calculated columns, etc. Now, with a Power BI data set, you can have one of these data set files and connect multiple and build multiple reports off of that. So you would have three blue icons for like, let's say three separate reports and then one associated data set. And let's actually um, conceptually see this and how that works in practice. But before we do that, the current architecture, we have, let's say table A, B and C being pulled from our on-prem systems, or this could be Azure, etc. wherever your source is you would pull that into three separate reports because you're building three separate reports. And then once you publish that to service, what you're currently doing is refreshing these reports three separate times when in fact they're looking at the same tables, but the reports are just doing or showing different things. Now the question you have to ask is, do we need to do this? And can we just have one data set because we have the, this one model and this one set of calculations? Now, you don't have to have one set of calculations. You can create all of the calculations you need for three separate reports in this one model. But essentially, you have one file that becomes the source for all these reports. So let's actually take a look at what the shared, arch not shared architecture, but what a data set architecture looks like. So you have table A, B, and C being pulled from your source system. You would produce a data set file. So this can be your calculations uh, and the import for all your separate reports. And then you would publish that to the Power BI service. And then in Power BI Desktop, you would now be connecting to that data set. So instead of having to refresh each data set se separately, because um, previously they produced uh, one data set, one report, your source for the reporting has now become the data set. So you're only refreshing the same tables once, and then that will sequentially just refresh all the reports because the source is the data set now. So this is starting to show some of the benefits. And let's just go into a little bit more detail about the benefits of using a data set. So it reduces the load on your server because you've imported the table once now, the tables once, instead of having to do that separately, well, bringing them in separately for three separate reports, you've only brought them in once into one data set. So that would naturally reduce the load on the server, the source. And if you're bringing in queries, they might, uh, due to the size of them or how they've been set up, they can actually impact performance as well. And the gateway, when, you, when you're when you refreshing more reports, um, the gateway gets affected because that's based on a VM. So the more data you're refreshing, the more load on the gateway. So this actually improves refresh times as well because you're refreshing less data. It's very, very simple stuff. Um, and then what's even better, I would say, is the reusable DAX logic. Now, when you bring in certain tables, there's some baseline measures that I say that are always relevant. Now, for those three separate reports, you will have those baseline measures you only need to create once. And then for the three separate reports, you might create some additional measures that aren't relevant to the other reports, but you're only creating that DAX calculation once and the logic becomes reusable across other reports for visualization. So it's very powerful in what it allows you to do. Now, the fourth point is more architectural and how you define self-service. I've seen in the past where data teams produce these data sets, give them to the business, and then they go ahead and build just the visualizations. Um, if that is the goal and you want your biz end users to actually start building reports, a good uh, progression towards that is providing data sets, um, certifying those from the central data team, and then they can actually just do the fun stuff, which is the visualizations, and, and the data team now has control of the calculation, logic layer, etc. So depending on how you define self-service, this can be a tool for that journey by providing data sets to the business. 
So now that you understand a bit about what Power BI data sets are and what they do, let's actually go ahead and um, build, build a Power BI data set and see it in practice. So, so let's go ahead and create our Power BI data set. The first thing you want to do is just pull in your data as you would. So from whatever source you're uh, pulling your tables, go ahead and do that. And in my case, I just pulled an Excel workbook, make your transformations and bring that into your um, Power BI desktop. Now, once you've done that, this is when you can begin to start creating your calculations that you need for your visualizations. So what you would do is let's say you know that you need to create a sales report. I might create my measures here for that sales report. So, and then, just so while we're testing, we would create our visualizations. But once you've done that, go ahead and then remove the, the visuals and then leave just the measures that you've created. Uh, if you have to, if you're creating another report, then create those measures in this file. Once you've done that, publish that report to uh, your workspace. So I'm going to publish this to the sales report workspace that I have. If we take a look at the workspace, we can see that we have our data set uh, published to the workspace. Now, once you've done that, the next step is to open up a new Power BI file. So you've created your data set with your calculations and your logic, and you've imported your tables. You want to get data and then select Power BI data sets. So let me open up a new file. So when you want to create your visualizations and actually build the report, you'll do get data, Power BI data sets, and by having access to the workspace, you can connect that data set and go ahead and begin to build your reports. So we can see that the top section here has grayed out and our measures have pulled through. We can create new measures in this report, but you should be doing this in your data set so that the reports just contain the visuals and you don't have to refresh again. Um, so let's create a visual. Uh, account roles by city but then let's say we needed to make a change and we need to create another measure you wouldn't do that in the report where you're creating the visualizations now you would go back to your original data set file recreate the measure so create the measure that you need so I'm just going to change this name to measure free um, change the name to measure free so assume that we've created a new measure we would republish that to the workspace so we would republish the, the data set now to the workspace. And if we refresh the file now, what we're going to see from our report page that's connected to the data set, if we refresh that, this is now going to change and bring in new measures or whatever changes that we made will be applied to this report. So it's very powerful. But what we're going to see is that the data set always produces um, a report as well. The reason for that is because the sheet one is always going to be present no matter what we do. So we, we can just go ahead and delete that and we can see the two reports that I've created connected to that data set do not have uh, a data set an orange icon because they're connected to this and we can see this in the lineage view where if we go to the lineage view we can see the two reports are connected to this one data set. It slows down the process slightly because you have to open up uh, the original data set file, make the changes and then refresh. But one of the benefits is if, if logic is changed or a new business requirement is set, this will roll out to, across all your reports. So you don't have to duplicate the work. So there's benefits and there's negatives. You have to weigh it up. But essentially, that is how Power BI data sets work. So without further ado, 